Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Tonight on TCM, we're marking the somber occasion of the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima, August 6, 1945, with two Japanese films, both made shortly after the end of the post-war American occupation of Japan. We began with Children of Hiroshima from 1952. Director Kaneto Shindo's film was commissioned by the Japanese Teachers Union. The union had specific goals, expecting the film to show not only the futility of war and weapons of mass destruction, but also the failure of the Japanese government and the American occupation forces to adequately respond to the surviving victims of the bombing. The union believed Children of Hiroshima failed to get those messages across. So the teachers union immediately commissioned another film, this time from Hideo Sekigawa. It's from 1953. The title is simply Hiroshima. Children of Hiroshima was an intimate story focused on a school teacher reconnecting with a handful of her students years after the bombing. By contrast, Hiroshima is epic in its score, promoted as having a cast of thousands. According to estimates, 88,000 extras were used, all residents of Hiroshima, many of them survivors. The film opens years after the bombing as school children try to manage the lingering effects of radiation sickness before flashing back to an extended and graphic depiction of the events of August 6, 1945. That recreation is powerful. A few years later, Alain René's new wave classic, Hiroshima Mon Amour, repurposed some of the film's footage. Notably, Rene's movie starred Aiji Okada, who plays Kirigawa in this film. Here it is, from 1953, Hiroshima. Hiroshima was released in Japan in 1953, but didn't premiere in the States until 1955, just as a trend was developing in Hollywood, with a number of movies finding inventive ways to show the dangers that nuclear weapons pose to the world. Think of The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, Them, and Godzilla. All stories about creatures created by radiation from atomic weaponry. The film's distributors approached promoting Hiroshima with a unique campaign. First, with respect to the movie's sober story of the real effects of nuclear warfare on human beings, the Continental Distribution Company offered theater owners a two-pronged approach. First, PR materials highlighting quotes from respected New York film critics advocating the importance of seeing the film as the Cold War intensified. Second, the company launched an exploitation movie campaign that used catchphrases like, and I kid you not, a box office A-bomb that will blast you out of your seat. Coming up, Silent Sunday Night with Jacqueline Stewart. She'll have three classic comedies written, directed by, and starring Charlie Chaplin.